In this video, I will share the process to scrape uh, YouTube videos. So we'll be scraping shorts and we'll be scraping videos. Uh, so uh, this is really, really powerful because we can scrape hundreds of um, creators all in one go. And then we can get uh, OpenAI to create the transcript. And then we can be a little bit cheeky and repurpose somebody else's content to create completely automated YouTube videos and YouTube channels. So here we are able to scrape TikTok, X, Instagram and YouTube. I voluntarily didn't include LinkedIn and we could use the same process to do so. But LinkedIn is a B2B platform. And if you scrape somebody else's content and then republish on LinkedIn, uh, you will end up looking like uh, like an idiot. So uh, in my opinion, this is not a very good strategy, uh, but for everything relating to uh, B2C or niches where everyone says the same thing, you can quite easily use this process and uh, piggyback off somebody else's content. So now let's dive into the uh, build. So here we have the uh, create a name and next we have the profile URL and then the platform and then the category and then we have this checkbox which is really important. So this checkbox actually behaves as a filter. Uh, so in the NIN workflow, uh, we check that this box is checked so that we can we, we know which creator we should scrape. So this is also the number of days. So if we want uh, content that has been published in the last three days, we will just add it here. So next we are going to use a couple of um, workflows. So not very complicated. They're actually very, very easy. Uh, so this one can run on schedule or it can simply um, be triggered manually. And uh, we are just checking that the checkbox is actually checked. Uh, so the uh, system knows uh, which creator to scrape. So we are using a switch node to uh, scrape different platforms. Uh, so we are using different scrapers here. So for the sake of this video, I will just focus on uh, YouTube. Uh, but here, this one scrapes um, uh, TikTok, uh, X, Instagram, etc., etc. So the process is, is pretty uh, straightforward. Uh, we just bundle all the URLs inside a, uh, an aggregate node. And then here, uh, this is the uh, API actor. And so um, to get this code, this is really, really straightforward. You just need to head over to um, API and then go to store and then uh, just search for the YouTube scraper. That's the one. And here you just enter a URL. So the search term can actually be a URL. Uh, so next, uh, you just need to click on JSON. And here you can see that the this is all formatted properly. So you just need to open up the um, HTTP uh, node and create a post request and then just use JSON and paste the content in there. Uh, and I will detail how to get the uh, profile URL uh, formatted properly uh, in, the, in the next few seconds. Uh, next, you want to um, just use the API endpoint. So you can click on API, API endpoint, and you choose the first one. So you just need to copy this and you will paste it just here. So everything is in there already. So the credentials are uh, already um, uh, set. You don't need to uh, touch anything in regards to this URL. So next, you want to um, just make sure that you are getting the data from the aggregate node. And so this is basically that. So this is aggregate that we map. Uh, and we add the uh, method here. Uh, so this is just almost uh, hard coded. So if you don't know how to do that, or if you don't know how to code, uh, you can join the community and inside the community in the classroom section, uh, there is a temp template vault. And then from here, you just need to download the file. And when you're inside N8N, you just need to uh, click those three dots 
and then import from file and you will have this exactly um, as uh, as i have it in like 10 seconds additionally inside the the community we have um, support calls and we have a troubleshooting section uh, so that you can get a, a lot of support because when you are creating automations it can feel a bit lonely and especially if you get stuck on something so that's what the community is for. So we are currently 49, uh, but yeah, this is this is growing growing every day. And so back to the uh, automation. So next, you uh, once you uh, you've created uh, this HTTP request, uh, you will want to create another workflow. So you head over to uh, NA10 create workflow. And then here you're going to uh, create a new webhook. And so uh, you need to copy the URL. So let me go back to the editor so that I can show you precisely how to do that. Uh, so you copy the, the URL and then in the YouTube scraper, you go to integration and then here add an integration. And here you need to choose HTTP webhook click on it and then uh, run succeeded and then just paste the URL here. At this stage, you need to, so that's not the one, obviously, uh, that's this one here. I didn't copy the right one. Uh, so this one here, and when this is into production, you need to remove dash test. That's really, really important. Otherwise it's not going to work. So I'm not gonna save that because I already have one. Uh, so basically, uh, the way it works is that when this YouTube scraper finished running, it's going to uh, make a call inside this next workflow. And so this one is basically going to fetch the, the uh, data set items. Uh, so here we are getting the title of the video, the type of videos, the URL, the thumbnail, the view count, etc., etc., etc. And then here as the next step, we also have a switch node. So I use the switch nodes a lot because sometimes the, the, the data is formatted differently. And YouTube is actually a very good example because the data coming from shorts and the data coming from videos is uh, very different. Uh, so here we um, are just splitting the process basically and then uh, updating um, data inside Airtable. Uh, so here we have the video URL and that's really, really important because this uh, column matches on the video URL. So it matches on the original video URL from YouTube and not on the ID on the, or the record ID. Because then as a next step, when we'll download the video and create the transcript, we will use that to match it so that we don't have duplicated uh, rows. So really, really important. And then here you just need to uh, drag and drop the uh, creator, the content, uh, the type of content, so that's short. So the reason why this is uh, out, um, written like that uh, as, a, as a fixed value uh, is because I, I just filter it by um, uh, video type here by content type, so short. And as you can see, this matches precisely. Uh, next, uh, you want to uh, leave video empty. You can actually just delete it. Uh, now we'll delete it. Uh, so it doesn't, doesn't really make much difference. Uh, captions, so this is also something that you can drag and drop. Uh, create a date, so that's really important here to make sure that when you are uh, using this value, you select the option typecast and toggle it on. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Uh, next, we have the uh, this field ready for video transcription, which is going to be produced by um, OpenAI. Comment count, obviously, uh, the ID of the video. We don't really use it, but we could. And the view count. So that's about it to create the uh, record in Airtable. And here, as you can see, this matches perfectly, so it works. Uh, here, this is actually a very interesting, uh, very interesting example, because here you can see that 
uh, in the captions, everything is the same. So this is a Black Friday offer, uh, but the videos are different. So that means they had a big push on that uh, on that specific um, topic, on that specific content, and we can quite easily spot it here. So next, we will want to download the video and then uh, make sure that we can actually pull the transcript from the, the video and then update it inside the video transcription here. So what we need to do for that is to create another HTTP request. And this one is going to work with the um, uh, YouTube video downloader. So that's really quite straightforward. The, the only problem is that with the YouTube video downloader, we don't get a lot of data. We just get the uh, source URL and the uh, download URL. But this is enough because we've already populated the data previously using the source URL. So that's what we will be using for matching. And that's, um, that's something that never changes. So that's almost like a fixed value. So it's, it works perfectly this way. So next, we are going to follow exactly the same process. So we are going to go to uh, the uh, API. So you want to go back to actor, uh, YouTube video downloader API. And then here, select API endpoint, and then just copy this and paste it. Uh, so this is where you actually need to paste it inside an HTTP request, and then you are out, and then you post it, you uh, just paste it in here. Next, you want to toggle on body. And here you will see that this is really, really simple. It's exactly the same as previously. Uh, we are going to go to uh, start URL and here you can just put anything and then just uh, go to JSON and then copy this JSON code and, and then just paste it in here. Uh, so as previously, uh, we have to map the URL coming from the aggregate node and this is the code to do it. Again, if you're not part of the community, you can find everything in here. So in the classroom section, and then uh, head over to templates, and then just click on the click on the template, download it, and then head back over to an and and import from file, and this is going to work uh, instantly. Next, you want to um, go to integration. So same again, YouTube video downloader integration and then here we are going to create a new integration so add integration http webhook and we will create a new workflow in n8n and the first node the first node is going to be a webhook so here we have the webhook which is always a post without any authentication uh, click on the, the this link here and uh, just paste it inside the uh, uh, URL section here when run is succeeded. So that's all you need to do. Again, make sure that you name it properly. Uh, so that means each time uh, this call is going to be uh, made uh, and the YouTube downloader has finished running, it's going to send the data, so the, the link to the downloaded uh, video to this webhook. And so now we can process with the, with the rest of it. So we are again going to use the, uh, the same principle. So we are going to use a get request. And so this get request is actually something that we can get from, so you click on run, then click on any run, and then here API and then get run. So this is gonna get the data from the previous run. And so we uh, make sure that this is the previous run because the uh, default ID is actually uh, posted inside the, the webhook, we can use it again here. So here you don't, don't need to change anything. This is, this is working just perfectly like that. Uh, next, we'll uh, download the video onto the computer. So not onto the computer, but into the, the server. So this is just a get request. And here that's um, really important 
that you don't touch anything else and that you use the, the right uh, download URL. So if you are trying to download directly from the source URL, so from YouTube, it's not going to work. But if you are going the, uh, to use the uh, IP5 URL, this is a, uh, actually going to return uh, a binary um, file, uh, which then we can use inside uh, OpenAI. So this is really, really easy. So the source is audio and we just transcribe a recording. So I just need to show you how to uh, get access to this node actually. Uh, so you uh, just click on the plus button and here we are going to get transcribe. So open AI and then you need to uh, pick it from the list here. Uh, so it's not the most obvious one, but one, once you've done it a, co a couple of times, you know exactly where to find it. Uh, so this is obviously pulling the, the transcription, so really good, because then we can use that again to uh, repurpose it and create new videos automatically, or even several videos automatically from the same source. And then here inside the Airtable database, uh, we are updating the, the record based on the video URL. So we are using the, the source URL uh, to map it and have the, uh, the exact same stuff so that we uh, only use the um, video URL and the uh, file that we then store uh, that we then store inside the, uh, the table. So that's really, really interesting. It's really powerful because not only you can get unlimited content IDs, but if you are feeling strong, you can also repurpose uh, content and you can actually create videos and completely automated YouTube channels. Uh, really, really easy. If you are trying to level up your automation game using N8N or Go High Level, or if you're working B2C or B2B, this community is definitely something that's gonna help you do that. So in here, we have different kinds of automations. So for instance, we have an automated emailing machine called emailing machine. So that's getting in touch with leads and booking appointments just uh, automatically. We also have a lot of uh, different content automation. For instance, if you wanted to scribe TikTok channels and then create or repurpose 